to Adam and uh, it's really an honor to be here and uh, a great blessing and thank you so much uh, President Brother Gunnar to, to be here. That was an, a divine appointment how we met and um, it's, it's amazing how God works in mysterious ways, amen? Yeah. And we, I mean just the fact that you are here from all over the world is already somewhat of a miracle and I'm sure that your story if I would you know if we would had the time to take uh, to, to hear your stories, it would be full of miracles and how God leads us. And not always easy, but God leads us and he is involved in our lives. And that is such a blessing. And so as said, I'm, I'm Stefan Barense. I'm uh, the director of Teen Challenge in the Netherlands. Uh, who has heard of Teen Challenge before? Any, anybody? So, so chances are that uh, there's a Teen Challenge in your country, uh, no matter where you're from, because there's a Teen Challenge in 148 uh, countries. Um, and it's uh, especially known for drug rehabilitation and, and evangelism on the streets. Uh, but it didn't start out that way. The story of Teen Challenge is really a miracle story. It starts with uh, David Wilkerson, a, a pastor um, uh, from, from the hills of Pennsylvania and uh, just a really rural area. And um, yeah, the church grew and you know everything was going well and fine, but there was something in his heart that, that there was a dissatisfaction in his heart. He, he was preaching about God and he was preaching about the Bible and about all these wonderful things, but something in his heart, he, there, there was something that was, yeah, he was dissatisfied. He said, God, if this is all, then, then, then you know, if this is ministry, if this is all, then, then maybe I, I, I don't want it. But that this is satisfaction drove him uh, to prayer. He got rid of his television set in 1958 <laughs> when televisions weren't all that common. And so he got rid of his television set, uh, got rid of all the distraction. Who knows, that's still very relevant today in, in 2024, to get rid of distraction in our lives. Who, who deals with distraction? When I, I'm here with students. And who is who's really lying? You know, I'm just kidding. Uh, but uh, but but he even back then, distraction was a very real thing. And uh, so the TV was... Um, uh, was, was, was barely invented and he was already for hours, hours and hours uh, watching TV every day and just got, got rid of that thing and spent time to pray. And you know, it is dangerous when you start praying because God will show up and he will speak. In the beginning, it was uncomfortable. He was, it was almost like withdrawals, uh, you know, just withdrawals from our antsy and all these thoughts and distractions. Henry Nouwen called uh, his time in solitude. He called that, uh, you know, it wasn't all that peaceful and the solitude on the outside, but on the inside, Henry Nouwen called it, it was like a banana tree full of monkeys, you know, in my head. So uh, distraction is not uncommon for all of us. But he got rid of his TV, started praying, and then he stumbled upon an article describing problems in New York, far away from, from his situation, far away from problems he's ever encountered, but about the gangs of New York that were killing each other. And, and, and he felt the Lord tell him, go to New York and help those boys. And very naively, this 20-year-old, very white um, pastor from the hills of Pennsylvania with uh, yeah, uh, a suit that barely fit him, went to the ghettos of New York, didn't know what he was doing, uh, dis you know, just describing it in his book as just stumbling along, is this God, uh, all these doubts coming in, but had an encounter with a man called Nicky Cruz. And Nicky Cruz was a violent uh, young man, abused, uh, was a son of a, of a, yeah, just of, of, of Satanists, and they were doing all kinds of seances. And actually, later on, we heard it's not in the book, but psychologists called him irredeemable and untreatable, too far gone. And they had an encounter, this, this, this unlikely encounter in the middle of New York, and this violent young man uh, heard uh, David Wilkerson just preaching on the streets, about the love of Jesus. And, and uh, afterwards, Nicky Cruz took him, grabbed him, slapped him, threatened him with a, with a switchblade and said, if you don't shut up, I'll, I'll cut you in a thousand pieces. And the response was profound because this, the, 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 you know, the language of the street is you have to be stronger, 
you have to be faster. You have to outrun the other guy if you're not if you're not stronger, uh, or you have to be more violent. You have to the the you know the language of the street is dog eat dog, right? You you just you just and and so he never expected the response from David Wilkerson because hate and hate just produce hate and violence and fear, shame and and, and just a crazy cycle of yeah just destructive uh, patterns in these lives of these young people, and so what David Wilkerson said changed his life and he said Nikki you can cut me up in a thousand pieces but all those thousand pieces will cry out that Jesus loves you and literally he didn't know he didn't know what to do he just walked away and it's also not in the book but that evening he was trying to like get those words out of he was banging his head against the wall and say I, I want those words out of my head because they are they're haunting me uh, but that changed his life this young man uh, gave his life to Jesus in a meeting also with by David Wilkerson and now eight, he's now 86 years old I just heard him this weekend I just returned yesterday from New York he's still going strong he preached the gospel to 86 million people in his lifetime so the, God is able to do really strange things amen with unlikely people with very unlikely situations and it's always a surprise because we cannot understand God we try to understand God right you're in seminary so you're trying to understand somewhat of God you're trying to understand the Bible and that is really a great thing to study the Bible but really honestly we cannot never understand God we will never be able to understand really how he works because he wants us to trust him the Bible says in Proverbs 3, verse 5 and 6, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him and he will make your paths straight. And it doesn't mean understand the Lord and, and, and try to, 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 to put him in some kind of pattern or to understand some kind of formula, which we try to do, right? We try to find some formula, and, and as soon as we try to understand, oh, this is how Christianity works, this is how our work with God, uh, walk with God works, we try to, to fit that into some kind of uh, way, and then God surprises us, and he messes up our plans sometimes. Uh, but, but it's amazing to see in the Gospels how, how most of the Gospels aren't organized religious I events. They're very, very normal meetings, gatherings of people eating together, walking to, on the streets, uh, all kinds of celebrations or, or just coincil coincidental interruptions. Uh, the, 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 all of the Gospels are full with those kind of stories. Isn't that amazing? That it's all these, these unplanned interruptions of, of where God does something amazing. And these conversations intrigue me because I would have never been born Born, if David Wilkerson didn't go to New York, Raphael, Jan wouldn't be here right now, and a lot of all those 148 countries with Teen Challenge, it wouldn't exist if, if that meeting between David Wilkerson and Nikki Cruz did not happen. And, and this, this chain of events, of course, traced all the way back to Jesus Christ dying on the cross for all of us. It's just amazing, and it's so profound, it's unquantifiable what God can do. Is it? I, I came across an article, and it it just really uh, surprised me. Um, uh, what what? Yeah, what God can do just through these these very unlikely meetings with very common people, with very and God is not a discriminator of of uh, of people of persons. Uh, Highly educated people, no education, people that have a, you know a really heavy, strange background, people from stable families. You you read it all in the Bible, right? It's all stories from the Bible, really normal people like you and I. And I, I came across a an article about uh, about an, uh, just a chain of events, and it started with this this gentleman called Edward Kimball. And Edward Kimball was a volunteer. He was a, was a Sunday school uh, teacher. And uh, in his Sunday school, there, it, was, it was a little bit an urban setting. And all these kids, they weren't paying attention. Everything was going really wild. And, but he had a heart and he persisted. He kept going and he prayed for these kids. And he, he was fervently and, and dedicated into everything. Yeah, that he, he, he just said, I got to keep going. And one day, he had one of his students and, and he really felt, oh, there's something about this this. this 
this uh, this kid. His name was Dwight, and and he was uh, was so persuaded that so he he just wanted to chase him. So he chased him to uh, his job, which was in a shoe store. And he, this kid was stocking shoes, shoe boxes in the back of the shoe store. And he went and chased him and told him about Jesus and explained Jesus to him, explained the gospel to him. And uh, there, Dwight gave his life uh, to to Jesus. Now. We know Dwight better as D.L. Moody. That happened. And now D.L. Moody uh, uh, also was an amazing influence and so many, so much, so, so many, so, I can't even start to begin the influence of, of D.L. Moody, but he uh, inspired a man called Wilbur Chapman and he became an evangelist and shared the gospel. Now, Wilbur Chapman spoke at an event where a baseball player came named Billy Sunday. Billy Sun Sunday was a famous baseball player and he came there and he was amazed by the gospel. He gave his life to Jesus and he became an evangelist himself. He quit playing baseball in, in, and he became an evangelist. Now, Billy Sunday had an influence on Mordechai Hem, uh, which he was a scholar and he was converted to, to, uh, to Christianity and uh, he did all kinds of very, very spectacular Crusades. I'm, now again, he was a scholar, but he went out and he had all kinds of props, like coffins and all kinds of props to 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 attract people. Now Mordechai Ham also was an influence on a, on a, on a person on Billy, and we know him as Billy Graham today. And Billy Graham preached the gospel to more people than anybody, even people in the in, in the in the in the New Testament, to 2.1 billion people he preached the gospel. Can you believe that? And that all started with Edward Kimball preaching the gospel to a bunch of wild, rowdy kids. So never underestimate the power of one person trusting Jesus. Never underestimate the power of, of these coincidental talks that you even have with each other. The influence that you have is profound and maybe different in, than you think. <laughs> different than you think. We all want to be maybe speaking and, and sharing our wisdom to, to people. But don't underestimate those talks in the dorm. Maybe here in, in the cafeteria, you, you will have conversations, you have influence. You might be able to encourage somebody to get through a day, to finish their semester, to finish their study, to help them out. Never underestimate the power of a common moment. And God is in those moments. And, and the Bible, once again, says, trust in the Lord with all your heart, with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. How, mu how many know it's easy to gravitate to your own understanding? I mean, I, we, we do it every single day, all the time. And it's, it's really in the process that the Holy Spirit wants to teach us to trust Him more. That's really what, what, that we are aware of, okay, am I leaning now on my own understanding or can I trust the Holy Spirit with this situation right now? And it says, in all things, in all your ways, Acknowledge him. And the word there is know, to know. And you know it better than I do. The word know is a very intimate word. To know him in all your ways. That for me means to invite him into everything that I do. I'm learning that. I'm 20 years in the mission. I'm just through a very difficult situation. Uh, last year where we had to close all our doors. The government, ha you know, the Dutch government. Who, who many, how many of you know that the Dutch government loves red tape? <laughs> loves bureaucracy and loves to make you fill out forms <laughs> even to get here. Uh, but, uh, but so we went through a difficult time. I can tell you, I was ready to quit the ministry. I was ready to give up. We are helping people. And I said, like, God, why are, why are you allowing this to happen? Why? I'm, we're helping drug addicts. We're helping people from the street. And we had such an opposition, such a hard time. And that's where I learned, in the valley is where you learn the most valuable lessons. We want to run away from pain, we want to run away from difficult situations, but it's especially in those situations where we learn to trust God with all our heart. You know, and it doesn't say with all our mind, although that's good, we love the Lord God with all our mind, with all our heart, with all our strengths, and everything within us, that's really good, that's a love, but we trust God with our heart. We have to learn to trust Him with our hearts. 
We don't understand why things are happening. I don't understand. My, it doesn't make any sense to me. What, God, why would you allow this? What am I doing wrong? How come this is happening to me? But to trust him is to say, okay, I don't understand what's going on, but I still trust you to, to, because you are God. You know better than I do. I surrender to, to your divine purpose in my life. And I want more of you. And through that difficult struggle, I tell you, now I'm happy. I'm, I can honestly say on the other side, I'm glad that to all the things, the struggles that we went through, because I'm learning to trust him with every single thought, with every single meeting, that I, every single meeting. And God has opened up tremendous doors. I thought I was having coffee with Nainat uh, just a few months ago, because Nainat is the, is, is, is the childhood friend of my roommate in Bible college, who would have known that, you know? Like, it's strange how the world works. And so my roommate in Bible college, um, uh, just, you know, somehow I, I get, oh yeah, I can, somehow I get, I don't even know how. So I thought I'm having coffee with Nainat, and all of a sudden I'm sitting with, with the leader of, of, uh, of an amazing theological seminary. And now I'm standing here to speak to people, most of you are a lot smarter than me. Uh, but I'm here just to encourage you because God knows what he's doing. He sees your struggle. He sees what's happening. And I just want to challenge you also, you know, just the, the, the study of the word is a noble cause. Your calling is a noble cause. It's such an important cause. To study the word of God is, 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 a, high, is a high calling. But never forget that, that theology has to be practical. It has to be practical. We have to love our neighbor. Because all our theology and everything will be worth nothing if we do not practice it. Amen? And I want to challenge you because you, are, you, have, you have a life-changing capacity inside of you. And it will not come from earthly wisdom. It will come from God's wisdom, His understanding. Because He knows what the person in front of you needs. What that person is going through. And he wants to speak through our lives and to change people like Nikki Cruz, to change people like Dwight. <laughs> and they're now Nikki's and Dwight's and Sam and whoever. But, but you don't know how much power there is in, in a very simple conversation. And just inviting Jesus into your, your situation. And, and just for me, just to end with this, the, the acknowledge part, the knowing him in all your ways means for me to invite him. To invite him into my emotions, whatever emotions they are, in all your ways, in, all, in everything, I'm inviting him to my pain, my struggles, my joy, my happiness. I'm learning that, to invite him into all my ways. And I'm noticing as I'm doing this, that somehow those crooked paths that we're on are made straight. And I'm meeting people, we're, we're seeing things happen like never before. And uh, I'm, I'm, I'm so thankful. And thank you so much for your attention and thank you for your time. I'm so honored again, Brother Gunnar. It's such an amazing, that meeting was, was a highlight for me and to see how God connects people and does things is just mind boggling. And uh, so let me pray with you uh, in closing and then I'm handing it over, I think, to, to Adam again. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for your presence right now. Thank you so much that you are in control. <laughs> you are you're in control. And from the foundations of the earth, you, you, you just created them and you created us into, into your image. And I, I just pray for these amazing students, for Tyndale. You know what each and every student here is going through. You know what the, the, the staff and, and the faculty is going through. And you know exactly the plans that you have for them. And I thank you for provision and I thank you for guidance Father and for your love even through the difficult situations we don't understand why they're happening and we don't have to understand but Father I pray that we trust you with all our hearts and lean not on our own understanding and Father I pray that we learn to acknowledge you in all our ways and thank you for making our path straight in Jesus name Amen, amen. God bless you all oh, sorry I, I have for all of you, uh, if you want, um, the story I just told, the cross and the switch, but the condensed version, the small, should be an easy read for all of you, but an inspiration. Here, I have the Dutch version also, but if you're interested, come and see me in front, I will give you a free copy. Thank you. Yes, thank you, yeah. <laughs> yes, thank you Stefan, for that encouraging word, that a reminder that all God can do 
many things uh, in our encounters with people that we might not see. So if you want to talk to him, he's going to stay around after this as well as for lunch. So thank you again, brother, for that word. So, and now uh, our benediction is, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you today. Go now in peace. Amen. Amen.